Come on, who's excited to be in church today? Is anybody? Come on, Lifeline Church. It is my privilege to be here today, and I am so excited to see all y'all. Man, that, 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 that video just makes me feel down-home goodness right there. I don't know about you. It made me feel really good. My name is Elliot. My wife Tiffany and I have the great privilege of pastoring this group of people called Lifeline Church. Come on, give it up for yourselves and all of our first-time guests today. Come on. Let them know you love them. We love you already. We're so excited to meet you. Uh, we have a mission here at the church. It's to be a lifeline by leading people to becoming lifelong followers of Jesus. That's what we are all about, all about. And so this is a great time right now to take out your bulletin. If you were handed a bulletin on the way in, there's some notes in there that you can take some notes with. It's, it's good to take notes every once in a while so you can remember what's being preached, what's being taught. You can also download the YouVersion Bible app. And you can take notes that way. Um, you can even make Lifeline your home church on that version Bible app. Very sophisticated stuff going on out there. I don't understand it all, but I think it's really cool. I think it's really neat. Um, one more thing before we jump into the message. I want to tell you about an opportunity that you all have. Um, if you've ever heard of our growth track, growth track is what we do to help bring people into the life of the church. Because it's one thing to just come on a Sunday. That's fun. We have a good time. And that's, that's fine and good. If you're right there, enjoy it. But if you're ready to, to join the team and kind of see what the church is all about, if this is going to be my home church or not, we do something called the growth track here so that you can be a part of the family. And you're already a part of the family, but you can join a team and really get everything that God has for you in the life of the church. But we normally do the growth track in three steps. And some people I talk to like, man, I don't, I don't got all kinds of time to do that. Three weeks in a row, geez, Louise, I don't know if I can do it. Well, you're in luck. You're in luck. We're doing something called a fast track that's happening on May 7th. Everyone say May 7th. May 7th, May 7th is a fast track where we're going to give you lunch. We're going to watch your kids. And then you're going to be able to do all the steps in one day. And you're going to be able to join the team just like that. And see, like, man, is this my church? Is this my home church? I want to be involved here and, and learn everything that I can. And to really take that next step to say, this is my home. This is, this is the place I belong. And this is, where, this is where I know God wants me. Growth track is for you. And the fast track might be a very convenient way for you to just get in and knock it all out. Everyone say May 7th. May 7th, that's when it's going to happen. I hope to see you all there. It's going to be wonderful. Now, uh, we're, we're in uh, the second week of this series called All in the Family. Last week, we talked about marriage. It was such a powerful message. I so enjoyed it because we got to watch a testimony video from a married couple in this church that has been through ups and downs and back around, and they, they made it through because they put Jesus at the center. I loved it so much. If you missed it, do yourself a favor, go back on Facebook or YouTube, check out that message, especially that testimony video. It's only about seven minutes long, but it, it was just so powerful uh, to hear this couple's story and to see how they got through the troubling times with putting Christ at the center. Amen, everybody. So today we're talking about parenting. Come on, who's ready to talk about parenting just a little bit? Now, last week, last weekend, I, I was kid-free for three whole days. Three whole days. It was like heaven on earth. It was wonderful. It was beautiful. I have a six and a seven-year-old, and I just forgot, personally, I forgot what it was like to just, to, to just leave the house whenever I wanted to. Uh, this, is how it this is how it looked. When I was kid-free for a few days, all I did was, I think I'm going to leave the house now. And then I just left. That was as easy as that. But when you got kids, you know it's not that easy. Well, why? Because you got to find your shoes. No, 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 not your blue shoes. I need your red shoes because it's cold out there. Where's your jacket? No, zip up your jacket. Where'd your shoes go? And I need your other shoes. You got one shoe off, one shoe on. Let me help you zip your jacket. And that's just me getting Tiffany ready to leave. <laughs> Being a parent is hard, man. I'm telling you, she needs help. She needs, she needs help. You know, I'm a helper. <laughs> Man, it's stressful, you know. Let me, let me zip you up, honey. Okay, not those boots, these other boots. Uh, how about bedtime? Let's talk about bedtime. Bedtime, when it's, when it's, when it's bedtime for the kids, they, turn, they turned into banshee mode. Am I just my kids or is it yours too? Bedtime, wah, they start running in circles. And, and I'm like, get in there, uh, brush your teeth. And they take the toothbrush out and they're like, whack, 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 whack. That's not brushing your teeth. What are you doing? Put your pajamas on. And then they get both legs and they put it in one leg and they're like, <laughs> bouncing around. I'm like, get in your bed. No, I don't want to. Ah. 
ah, they're like rolling around on the ground. What are you doing? What? Why? Why? What's, what's wrong with you? And then you get them in the room, right? You get them in there and everything's fine. And you, you, we got a little noise machine in there so that they can't hear that we're watching TV out there because that would just drive them crazy, right? And so we, we put them in there. The noise machine's there. They can't hear nothing. We put them in there. And it starts to just, the whole, the whole atmosphere changes. Parents, you know what I'm talking about, bedtime. And that hour or however long you got of just peace, of just peace, finally. And so you're, you're there and you're sitting on the couch and, and we're just, you know, going to turn on some TV and watch some TV and then we just relax. But then you look over and there they are. They're right. They're like children from the corn, like, I'm scared. I'm scared. I don't, you scared me. Like, that's, I'm terrified right now. This is, it's like, come on, man. <laughs> yeah, kids are a gift from the Lord, aren't they? Aren't they a gift from the Lord? They are. They really are. They, it's, it's beautiful. They, they are. They are. Just keep, keep saying it over and over again. They're a gift from the Lord. They are. They are. They are. Psalm 127, children are a gift from the Lord, but like, is there a gift receipt that we got going on here? We got these kids from Costco. You got two years. You got two years. Take them right back, you know, and just doesn't matter what condition they're in. <laughs> no, nah, that's so silly. They're a reward from him. Children born to a young man are like arrows in a warrior's hand. And, and the way I read that, the way I look at that is like, like one day I'm going to get to launch him out. That's, I'm going to get to launch him out. You know, I'm like, pew, bye, see you later. But that's, that's, that's legitimate. And I'm, I'm getting a little bit serious here. One day, we want to launch our kids out so that they hit their intended target, so that they're serving God, so that they're, so they have marriages of their own that are, they're, they're well-adjusted adults. We, every parent I've ever met, there's no parent that's like, you know, I really want my kid to have a terrible life. No, no one, no parents ever said that. We all want our kids to be launched out into adulthood to, to be everything that they possibly can be. But here's the problem. Um, just like an arrow uh, that gets launched out, um, every single human being and every child especially, um, we're born with a bent. We have a, we, there's a bend in this arrow. So I, I'm, I'm going to show you a little bit what this looks like. Do I have a grateful volunteer? <laughs> Go ahead. Go. Ooh. Yep. I got another one. I got another one. Here, Tiff, you do it. You do it too. Now, two, two apples, both heads. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Now, now, who's feeling really safe at church right now? Is this a safe space? Are we in our safe place? I am not going to draw this back. Do not worry. But can you imagine trying to launch a kid into their li- You putting it on your head for real? You really think I'm going to do this? I'm not going to do this. Like everybody in this section right here just got, I'm never coming back here ever again. I might die. I don't know. But if this, air, if this arrow has a bend in it, I get some ner- nervous right there. This, I'm not even, it's not even attached to anything. You're like, <laughs> if this arrow has a bend in it, someone's going to die. Like so, so, something good, good is not going to happen. Those apples are gifts for you. I don't need them back. Please don't throw them back at me during the message. I, don't do that. I shouldn't have even said that because now they're going to think about it. I'll prove it to you that every kid, every human being, we all have a bent in us that that keeps us from flying straight, that keeps us from flying towards our intended target with our Father in heaven. It goes like this, Proverbs 22, 15, foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. Someone say amen. (laughs) I know you know it's true. You know it's true. And here's the thing, the rod of correction, ooh, the rod of correction We'll drive it far from him. We're, we're going to talk about that a little bit today. We're going to talk about discipline and correction. Discipline is important, not abuse, all right? I know I'm in California, and I might get canceled if I'm like to tell you not to discipline your child, but hey, we, we, we need to be aware of the different things that we can do to bless our kids and set them up for a good future. And the, the Bible, believe it or not, has a lot of good things to say about this. Proverbs 22, 6 says this, train up a child the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. The Greek, the Greek phrase here, train up, is, is a Greek phrase to dedicate. It means to dedicate. And this is not a dedication ceremony where the, the parents just come and you hold your baby like this and you got a little dress that they never wear again and then the family comes in and you tap them and they're like, they're blessed, dedicated, boom, just done like that. This is a process, a training. It, it, it means to, 
to train on an, like if I'm dedicated to something, it's long term. I'm going to stay dedicated to it. That's what the Bible's talking about here. Dedicate them. Train up a child. Dedicate them to the Lord on an ongoing basis, and they're going to be blessed for that. Think of a trainer at the gym. If you've ever been to a gym, you've ever had a trainer, ever seen one, you know that if a trainer's working with someone and they, they see like they're doing a, a movement and it has bad form, the trainer is going to, boom, stop them right there, correct them. Why? Because if you have bad form, it could cause permanent injury. It could, it could damage you. Like if you do a deadlift or something and you got your shoulders all hunched like this, I, my back hurts just thinking about that. I can't even show you. But that can happen. That's why a trainer will stop you and go, nope, no, 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 no. I'm going to stop you right there. And I'm going to train you and, and show you the right way to do it so that you don't get hurt. And I know correction doesn't always feel good. It doesn't feel good to be corrected. But it also feels good not to get injured permanently and have a lifelong injury and a lifelong problem that you have to face because no one ever showed me the right way to go. It's a high calling to be a parent. But going all in means understand, going all in means understanding the season that your kids are in. Did you know that your kids are in different seasons all the time? They're, they're graduating from one season to the next, and it's important to understand that season. Listen to this, Ecclesiastes 3.1. For everything there is a season. For everything there's a season, a time for every activity under heaven. There's different seasons with your kids, and that's what we're going to spend the rest of our time talking about, these different seasons. Here's the first one. I'm going to spend the most of my time here. I believe it's probably one of the most important, from zero to five, zero to five. This is the season where you need to establish authority in your kid's life so that you can train them, so that you can train them, not so you can be the boss, not so you can feel good about yourself and be like, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm hard on my kids. No, 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 no. It's not like that. But they need to know that your voice matters. And they will never learn any better than that season of life when they're young, when they're little kids like that. Um, it means, this season means you speak, they listen. Like, stay out of the freeway. Like, they need to hear your voice one time and whoop, and, and be able to retain that. And if you do this well, you won't have to do this as much as they get older. You see that? Like, when they're young, but it's the hardest to do because they're so dang cute, they're so cute. All the things they do wrong, all the things they rebel and they don't listen to you, no, and they throw their, you know, applesauce on the ground. It's like, oh, darling, you're so sweet. It's, but what's cute at age three is not cute at age 15. If you got a 15-year-old throwing applesauce on the ground, you got a problem, a big one. But listen, at 15, if we didn't do anything to establish a, a voice of authority, then it, it becomes too late or it starts to get too late. But God can do anything. God can help you, especially if you didn't know this before. I believe God can help you. I, th I believe there's also two main reasons for disciplining our, our kids and, and establishing that authority. And it's, it's these two areas that I believe are most important. And these two areas are lying and rebellion lying and rebelling. You don't just want to discipline your kids if they break the lamp. You know, it's an accident. They didn't mean to necessarily. You want to save that discipline for the most important things, which I believe is lying. Did you eat, the, did you eat that candy bar? Chocolate all over the face. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, nope, sure didn't. <laughs> We've all done it. Now, and when we were, and when your kids, they're so cute, right? But they need to learn. Like, and in that zero to five age, they need to know that every time I lie, it's like, and it's up to you, but like maybe a, a little thick or maybe a, a little spoon on the bootay. You know, they got more cushion right there. I'm not talking about abuse. I'm not talking about leaving marks. I'm not talking about whooping on your kids like some of us experience. I'm talking about something that stimulates them to go, ooh, every time I lie, there is a negative consequence. That will last their whole life if you do it when it's young, when, you, when they're young. Or, so that's lying and then rebellion is um, you know, uh, don't take that candy bar and then they grab it right in front of you. That's the rebellion. Or uh, I want you to go to your room and, and clean it. No. no. That, that would be called rebe rebellion and lying are the two reasons I believe are, is most important because they need to learn that when you speak as a parent, mom, dad, when you speak, that it matters. It matters that I listen to my father. Are you seeing how important this might be long-term in life? When my father speaks, I will listen. Or when my mother speaks, I will listen. When my, when my parent speaks, I, I need to listen. 
And there's something important there. And not just, not just disciplining for any reason. The scripture says this in Colossians 3. Children, obey your parents. This pleases the Lord. Fathers, don't aggravate your children or they'll become discouraged. Like disciplining out of anger, every time a lamp gets broken or they spill you know, something all over the ground, they, they didn't mean it. And I'm preaching to myself too, all right? We're all, we all been there, all right? Not a church of perfect people. We're all working on this. But we need to save that discipline for the right moment so they don't just think, man, dad's always mad at me, always mad at me. They're never happy with me because I'm, I'm always getting disciplined for this, that, and the other thing. Let it go. Let that one go so that when you do discipline, it carries more weight. And they know I'm gonna get corrected if I lie or if I do not listen right to mom and dad. That is so important. I was listening to a parent in, in Target. Uh, this, this, is, this really happened. There was a parent in Target, this mom, you know, and she was in the other aisle. I didn't see her, but I was listening to like, have you ever heard the count to three method? Count to, I'm going to count to three. To me, that's like, I'm going to give you three chances to not listen to me. Like, I'm going to like, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to count to one, you know, and, if you, and they're just still running around. And then I'm going to say two, and then I'm going to break into Brian McKnight. Then I'll start back at one. It's like, I'm going to start all over again. I'm gonna, have you ever heard that one? Oh, Tommy, I'm going to tell you. Two? Oh, I really mean that. Tommy, one. And then you start all over again. What is that? And, and I'm in the next aisle like, three. <laughs> Susan, do something. And I, I don't know what her name was, but like, we're in this series called <laughs> I'm going to invite her to church. Like, I don't think I could really help you. Come on. Because we're teaching our kids when we do that. We're teaching our kids that you don't need to listen to me the first time. I'm just going like, to have to repeat myself over and over again. And hopefully, maybe one day, you'll, you'll listen. But with me and my kids, like, I want to show them. And I know you might, might be thinking, man, Elliot sounds kind of harsh right now. He's only going to tell them one time? Be, in, their younger, in their younger stages, yes. Because I want them to take my voice seriously. So that means for me, if I say no, or if I say something, I better mean it. I don't just want to be barking out commands all day, every day, not really expecting them to, to, to follow it, because then I'm going to be sending the wrong message to them. Like, if it's okay that they watch TV, say yes. Mom, can I watch TV? No. Mom, can I watch TV? No. Mom, can I watch TV? <sighs> Fine. <laughs> we've all been there. We have, we've been there. We have all been there. But think it, think it through. Think about what you're, what you're showing is that, man, if you just pester me, I'm not going to really, I don't really mean it. I don't really mean it. I know I'm kind of harping on this a little bit, but I want to hopefully give you some tools and some encouragement that your young kids, you can really set them up for success because I know how cute they are. It's so cute. You don't want to be hard on them, but, but listen, this is your moment. This is your chance when they're young like that, and I believe God can redeem. Like, if you haven't done this in the past, God can help you, and he can make all things new. He definitely can. But I hope you take that in and, and use that season of your kid's life to establish that, that voice of authority so that you can train them. And so that brings, me, brings us to our second uh, phase in life is ages 6 through 12. This phase is going to be easy if you do the first one right. And it's training and instilling values. Now we're starting to train them because when they were younger, they, they didn't even understand what's going on. All they needed to know was what mommy and daddy says matters. That's all they need to know. But now, between six and 12, this is when all the questions happen. Come on, parents, you know what I'm talking about. Like, Emma could ask me, Emma's my seven-year-old, she can ask me about 55 questions a day. I have never clocked her, but if I sit down with her, she could ask me 10 in a row, all right? This girl got questions. She's got some serious questions. She's got some nonsensical questions, but that's the season of life she's in. She wants to understand she wants to start gathering some information about the world and how it relates to her. So that's the season I need to appreciate that she's in. And I want to instill certain values to her in this time, like who she is and how much she matters to God, how to treat God, how to treat people, how to respect God, how to respect people. Like in this sweet age between 6 to 12, I can begin to show her how to live a godly lifestyle. And you can do this with your kids too, just by, by showing them and training them and instilling values in them. Uh, things, like, um, things like going to church, like, oh, we go to church every Sunday and it's awesome. We love it. And worshiping God, like we, we stand up during word, like they're just there. They're just watching you. They're receiving and, and, and absorbing everything you're doing. So this is your window to show them everything you can show them. Things like going to church, reading the Bible, prayer, having integrity, 
coming back and telling the truth after or, you know, something, they'll watch you do that and they'll begin to have that too. So that means if you make mistakes, boom, you can, you can correct and they'll learn from it. Uh, things like generosity. We do very specific things with our kids to teach them how to manage their money. Like they don't, they don't work. You know, we give them a little allowance, $5, and we have three little envelopes we give them. One says save. It's like cute. It's got little stickers on it. It's fun. This one says save, one says spend, and one says give. And so we give them the $5 and they put their little 50 cents in. It's like it, it came from us anyways, right? So, but we're just showing them and we ask them, where does, this, where does all the money come from? Mommy and daddy? No, 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 no. Where does all the money come from? Oh, it comes from God. Like they're just taking it in. I'm training them. I'm teaching them things so that when they're getting older, they already know. Because I, I want to train them in the things of God and I want to show them the kind of life that, you know, praise the Lord, some of us weren't brought up that way. We weren't brought up that way. And now we're having to catch up as adults, right? Well, we want to do the best we possibly can for our kids. So I want to show them as, as soon as I can that, man, we're going to celebrate those things. And I don't just want to make the bad thing wrong or like the wrong thing that they do bad. Ooh, don't do this. Don't do that. Don't do this. I want to make the right thing fun. I want to make the right thing fun. Oh, church. Oh, it's church day. Sunday fun day. All right. All of your friends are going to be there. This is awesome. Come on. Oh, we get to go and we get to sing songs and we get to do, and we're celebrating the good things. We're celebrating the good things. We're not just punishing the wrong thing. There's going to be times where you need to do that. I get it. I get all that. But what I want us to think about is what if we like won their heart instead of smothering them into submission? What if we won their heart and started celebrating the good things like generosity every time they give, you know, a nickel or that 50 cents that they give like, oh man, good job. It's going to win their heart over instead of like, oh, there's 50 cents. Yeah, I know. I know. But we have to. You see the difference there? Let's, let's win our kids' hearts by, by showing them the right thing to do. Oh, telling the truth. You told the truth. Even if it was like a bad thing they did. Oh, you told the truth. Way to go on that. Yeah, you made the mess. All right, we'll clean it up together. Thank you so much for telling the truth. I'm so proud of you. It's a game changer. It's a game changer if you've never thought about it this way. I, I think that's the way the Lord really draws us in too. For any business owners here, any managers here, um, I mentioned this in first service and it really just struck me. I, I meant to add it to my notes, but I'm glad I remembered. Anybody in a, in a workforce or anything, you know the difference in culture between the wrong thing being punished or the right thing being celebrated. It's a totally different culture and work environment. If you have any kind of authority to speak into that as a manager or as a boss or a business owner, try celebrating the right thing instead of only punishing the wrong thing. Watch the environment change. Watch the atmosphere of your work environment change dramatically. Start celebrating what's right. That doesn't mean you have to be cheesy. That doesn't mean you have to be all, oh, good job. Now, come on, like we're grownups, okay? But use your, use your creativity. You can do this. You can figure it out. Hey, I saw how you, I saw how you, you showed up five minutes early. Man, I, I really, I, good job on that. It's not that hard. It's not that hard to think it through and, and start to celebrate the right thing instead of only punishing the wrong thing. And I'm telling you right this, in, in the ages 6 to 12, it's going to change their hearts. It's going to change their hearts. And uh, the next stage is this, 13 to 18-ish, <laughs> ish, 18-ish, is coaching for adulthood. Coaching for adulthood. This is when kids are growing their wings. Uh, they're becoming their own person. They start to flex on you. Huh? Has any parent in here ever been flexed on yet? Just wait. It's adorable. It's adorable when they think they're grown, when they think they know what's going on. Oh, yeah, I, you don't know nothing. I'm like, oh, you're precious, aren't you? Look at you. Big, bad, whatever. Oh, you, you need any money or any food today? Huh? You need, you need a warm bed to sleep in? You ain't grown. Last time I checked, if you still need me, you ain't grown. Uh, that's why I said 18-ish. Ish. You know, uh, remember, uh, grandkids are your reward for not killing your children. So, so don't kill. I got really good advice from church today. Don't kill my kids. Uh, all right. Good job, pastor. You did a good job. You ever notice kids these days, they do. They talk like they're grown. The kids these days talk like they're all grown up. And it's, it's hilarious. Um, I have a grown son. He's 18 years old and he doesn't need my money and he doesn't need my shelter. I'm very, very, very proud of him. But he had his own stages too. And he, 
he's a funny, he's a funny guy too. And I had to kind of show him because it's like teaching how to drive in that stage of life. You're teaching them how to drive too. And it's a lot like teaching how to drive. You're, you're sitting passenger and they've got their hands on the wheel, but you're like, Hey, remember your turn signal. I know. That's when the I know statement shows up, by the way, 13 to 18. So they went from asking all the questions to knowing every single thing that ever happened in the world. Okay, I know, I know. No, you didn't know because your blinker wasn't on. No, you didn't know because you almost ran into that guy. You did not have the right of way. No, you didn't know. And I'm constantly speaking, like when I was training uh, Corbin how to drive his car, you know, and I played a part in that and was like, hey, you do this, do that. I know, I know. No, you don't know. I, I, but I didn't want to play a passive role and just sit there and be like, my presence alone. My presence alone will show him. No, 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 no. I'm going to keep on speaking, 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 turn signal, right of way. You got to go a little bit quicker. You got to go a little bit slower. Why? Because when I'm not there, which is coming soon, I want him to still have my words in his mind. I want him to be thinking, oh, turn signal, turn signal right away, a little bit slower, a little bit faster. I want him to be able to hear that. So I'm going to speak. I'm going to continue to speak, even though he hates it. Even though he can't stand it, even though I know, I know, I'm, I'm not going to let that stop me. I'm a grown up. I do, I, I do what I know is right. I don't do what my kid tells me to do. I do what I know is right, not to be mean to him, but because I know he needs it. I know he, he needs it. But sometimes, you know, it's, it's really, really tough. Proverbs 29, 18, when people do not accept divine guidance, they run wild. But whoever obeys the law is joyful. Teach your kids this. In this stage of life, 13 to 18, teach them this. Responsibility equals freedom. Responsibility equals freedom. The more responsible you are, the more freedom I'm going to give away. You want to experience real freedom in this stage of life? If you show me responsibility, you always come home on time, I'm going to let you out every single day. Because you're always coming home. You're always doing the stuff you're supposed to be doing. You're always showing responsibility. Because the same is true in adulthood. The more responsible you are, the more freedom you're going to have. Think of your work. I mean, think of your job. Think of your career. You know, at, the more responsible you are, the better you are, the more freedom you're going to end up having over time. Show your kids that. Teach them now while they're still in the home. Teach them that responsibility equals freedom. And, the, and these things are so important, like showing up early. Uh, yes, sir. No, sir. Come prepared to things you said you're going to come to. Do what you said you're going to do. Respond to people. Kids these days have to be told to respond you know, I got, you know, kids, you just be like, hey, and they'll be like, not say nothing. Or you'll text them, hey, what, what time are you going to be home? <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not going to work. That's why I got you that phone, right? Come on. Like, you want to, I want to show them how to, like, because you don't treat people like that. I don't want to show them it's okay to treat people like that. I want to coach them for good adulthood, good adulthood. And then this last stage right here, which I have the, the borderline privilege of, of starting to enter into is 19 and up and being a lifetime consultant, lifetime consultant. This is your grown kids, kids, maybe your kids are 40 years old. You're still a consultant to them. You're still a consultant to them. The only difference is they, they don't need you until they need you. And you, they don't have to listen to you anymore. It's a, it's a, it's a funky thing. And I'm just barely getting into it. Um, but I, I believe the, the word of God can, can show us how to live this way. It's like what we want to do is show our kids, even who are grown, listen, I will always be there for you. The minute you reach out to me, the, no one will be a better consultant for you than me. No one's going to be more loving. No one's going to be more supportive. No one's going to respond better. No one's going to have better advice. I want to show my grown kids, no one will be a better consultant to them than me. And that's the way I believe it should be. As fathers and mothers, we should always be there for our kids all the way into their adulthood, showing them, I will always be here for you, always. I wrote it like this, and this is how I would say it to my son. This is how I do say it to my son. I know you don't need me like you used to, but I want you to know that I will always be there for you. I will always be your father. You will always be my son. I will always be here for you when you need me. Now, um, I know that we can do all the right things, and sometimes our kids make their own choices. Um, spoiler alert, they are their own people. And as good as we do, a good a job as we do, and we can do all the right things, raise them in church, show them the right way, but still kids can go their own path. This is what I did, me and my sister both. 
I'm sorry if I spoke for you, Monica, but I love you. Um, listen, my parents, they did such a wonderful job, such a wonderful job raising us. They did absolutely nothing wrong, but me especially just went crazy, absolutely wild, and it wasn't their fault. In re the recovery circles that I'm in and, and speaking to addicts, but sometimes parents of drug addicts, parents can get really down on themselves thinking that they, they're to blame. And I have something to say to you, you're not, it's not always about the choices you made or didn't make. We're human beings. We make our own choices. So that doesn't necessarily rest on you. And there's a family in this church. There's a godmother and godfather in this church who have been through something like that. And they did everything right. They essentially everything right and raising their kids there and, and doing everything good. But sometimes we just, things don't go as planned. And so we took some time interviewing them and, and getting some of their insight and input, and I really hope it blesses you, so I'd like to direct your attention to the screens, and let's go ahead and play that interview, and I hope it really blesses you. I'm Ernie Meyer. And I'm Teresa Meyer. Teresa and I met in 1972, right? Yes. 50 years next year, married. The story of how we met, my friends and I were gonna get together in a park just to hang out. That night, my friend, she brought two guys, and it was Ernie and a friend of his, and then we met, and bam, yeah. <laughs> We've been together ever since. Well, I, I would say that one of the favorite things we'd like to do is, is go to Yosemite National Park. We got married there, too. We like to take hikes together and uh, just go on family adventures. We like to bring people to trails that we like, you know, and go hiking and enjoy nature. What changed in our relationship when we had children is, uh, you know, it, w it was a good, good thing to be at church and be involved with uh, Sunday schools and, and, and children's ministries. So that really was a bonding, really, for, for us. I just like to say, having a dad like Ernie was uh, awesome because he was adventurous and he introduced the boys to all kinds of crazy stuff and, and just regular stuff with, you know, hiking and camping and fishing. And, and uh, I don't know, I, th I think they had a great childhood. The most challenging part of raising kids was later on in their teen years and as young adults making bad decisions and and um, just trying to deal with that and not knowing what to do to help them or if there was anything it just caused us to lean on God and um, and count on him to bring good out of it in the long run and he did and uh, but it wasn't easy. And um, when you see your kids struggling and, and they can't find their peace and they need to turn to God, but they're not ready. The most challenging thing of that season would have to be just remaining constant in um, trusting in God through it all. Well, I wish I wouldn't have worried so much during uh, the tough times because we're not supposed to worry. We're supposed to give it to God. So I would say if you are in that spot to reach out to others that maybe are going through that or have gone through it and join a life group <laughs> and, um, and just don't do it alone. Uh, advice for the struggling parent would be to see the long range view of it all and through it all God prevails and God loves you and God loves your children through it all. I'm really excited about this season of life with my grown kids because they've become you know two of my very best friends. The relationship we have is really strong because of the things that we've gone through together you know as a family and and with each of them individually the things they went through and then they came back. And now we have grandkids and great grandkids. And this season is pretty amazing to come this far and um, celebrate 50 years of marriage next year. And uh, to have this beautiful family, I just feel really blessed, blessed by God.
So my advice is, the bottom line is, you know, you've got to trust God. Come on, let's give it up for these two that got vulnerable and shared some of their, their hardships. And it's not easy. Being a parent is just not easy uh, for any of us. And, um, um, you know, I, I really... I really I listen to a story like theirs and know that even though we do all the things we know how to do and do all the right things that we, we think we're, we're, we're trying to help them, but sometimes they might just make their own decisions and it's not, that's not on you. It's not on me. We can, trust, we can trust the Lord, do what's right, do what we know is right, and trust that they're in his hands. And so uh, before we jump into baptisms here, I just have a couple things that I would love to bless you with that if you'll do them, I believe it could be really beneficial to your parenting and for the long-term health of your kids. Number one is this, model what you want to see. Model what you want to see, whether that's prayer or Bible reading, uh, how you treat people, how you treat your spouse. Like, if you want them to grow up to be that, show them that. Show them that. They will see it. They will catch it. They will take it on. Let them see you do it. The second thing is this, direct consistently direct them in that consistently they see you every single day they are receiving from you like what you say what you do in passing and there's no days off in this they are watching every single day and i would add this too it's not just what they see that's directing them like what they see you do they're seeing your heart too so if you're doing something behind closed doors that you, you know, wouldn't want them to do or don't want them to, to be going on. Let me tell you something. They, they can see through the exterior. Your kids know you. They know you. They know when you're off. They know what you're feeling. They can see through the hard exterior. They can see right into your heart. And so believe me, if you want to direct them, do what's best in your heart for you, following God the best you can, living with integrity, even when they're not looking. And believe me, they will be blessed. Your kids will be blessed because you're showing integrity, even if they're not watching because they can see inside. They can see you. They can see in through your eyes and just know mommy and daddy, or they're, they're doing the right things and I can see that. Number three is this, create a life-giving environment at home. Oh my gosh. Make home the best place to be for your kids. Make it a joy. That's what we try to make church like. Like, church should be enjoyed, not endured. Like, that's a value here. Why not make that a value at home, too? Like, not always rules and coming down on everybody, but this is like the fun, safe place. My home is my favorite place to be with mom and dad. This is my favorite place. And a, a way to do this is to just try and share meals together. I, I know everybody's working these days just to pay bills. Mom's working, dad's working, everybody's working doubles, and, and everybody's doing everything they can. But if you can just squeeze in like two or three or four meals a week, doesn't matter what they are, breakfast, lunch, dinner, doesn't matter. And then around that table or if you're around the counter, ask them something like, what was something good that happened to you today? What was something that was hard today? An open-ended question, let them open up to you and watch their, watch their eyes and their heart transform as they're seeing that openness at home. Create a life-giving environment at home. I, I promise it's gonna bless you. The last thing is this, point them to Jesus. Point them to Jesus. Listen, and I bet some of us feel like, well, I, I don't wanna be a hypocrite. I'm not doing everything I'm supposed to be doing. Well, join the club, all right? We're, that's, that's everybody. Everybody in the whole world feels that way. But I could be doing better. I should be doing better. I could be doing this. I could be doing that. Don't let that stop you from pointing your kids to what you believe and know is right. Point them to Jesus and, and just let them, let them see your love for them in that. This is our greatest privilege. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. If we can do this one thing, I believe it will change the whole story, especially the ending of their story. Everything else will make sense. Matthew 6, says this, seek the kingdom of God above all else. Teach your kids this. If we just see, if you just would seek God, listen, son, listen, daughter, everything else is gonna be okay. I know you might have some sorrow, you might have some trouble, you might have some pain, but if you trust the Lord and seek him, it's gonna work out. It's gonna be all right. Hang in there. 
And that's what mommy and daddy are trying to do. That's what mommy's trying to do. That's what dad's trying to do. I, I feel for you. I know it's probably one of the hardest seasons. Parenting is so, so, so difficult. And so I do wanna pray a blessing over you so that you could just receive something good. And I pray that just one thing would, would help you today. And so if you would, just bow your heads and close your eyes with me. I wanna pray over you and pray for you. Father, I, pray, uh, I just pray over every person here that is a parent or going to be a parent. Lord, I pray blessing on them. I pray that they would be encouraged and lifted up and that they would not feel condemned or guilty for not doing a good job, but that they would be built up and lifted up that their future starts today and they can begin a new day today and tomorrow and every single day and we can choose you every single day and choose to do what's best for our kids and best for us every single day. And if there's anyone here that just needs that for themselves, that man, I wanna bless my kids and I wanna do what's best for them, but I know right now I need a little bit of this. I need a little bit of God's love in my heart. I need a little bit of God's life in me. If that's you today, I'll, this is your moment. This is your time. If you want to start a relationship with him or maybe you wanna get back into a relationship with God, now is your chance, now is your time and I would just love to pray with you. So if that's you, if you would just lift up your hand and say, that's me, I, amen, I see you. Amen, I see you and you and you, hallelujah, and you, I see you, praise the Lord. If you would with me, family, can we just pray together? Just repeat it after me. Say, Father God, I give you my heart. I give you my life. Forgive me of my sin. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and your encouragement to live for you, forgiven. Amen. Amen. Come on.